You're quite a long way from Tevinter, Alexius. Indeed I am. Though I have heard you are no Ferelden either, it seems we are both strangers here. Felix, would you send for a scribe, please? Pardon my manners. My son Felix, friends. I am not surprised you're here. Containing the breach is not a feat that many could even attempt. There is no telling how many mages would be needed for such an endeavor. Ambitious, indeed. Well, when you're fighting a massive tear in the sky, you can hardly afford to think small. There will have to be. Felix. My lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Are you all right? I'm fine, Father. Come, I'll get your powders. Please excuse me, friends. We will have to continue this another time. Fiona, I require your assistance back at the castle. I don't mean to trouble everyone. I shall send word to the Inquisition. We will conclude this business at a later date. Come to the Chantry. You are in danger. Good. You're finally here. Now help me close this, would you? that work exactly? <laughs> you don't even know, do you? You just wiggle your fingers and boom. Rift closes. Who are you? Ah, getting ahead of myself again, I see. Dorian of House Parvis, most recently of Minrathus. How do you do? Another Tevinter. Be cautious with this one. Suspicious friends you have here. Magister Alexius was once my mentor. So my assistance should be valuable, as I'm sure you can imagine. I was expecting Felix to be here. I'm sure he's on his way. He was to give you the note, then meet us here after ditching his father. Are you the one who sent that note, then? I am. Someone had to warn you after all. Look, you must know there's danger. That should be obvious even without the note. Let's start with Alexius claiming the allegiance of the mage rebels out from under you. As if by magic, yes? Which is exactly right. To reach Redcliffe, before the Inquisition, Alexius distorted time itself. He arranged it so he could arrive here just after the Divine died. You catch on quick. Manipulating time itself? Many have attempted over the ages, but never once succeeded. The rift you closed here. You saw how it twisted time around itself, sped some things up and slowed others down. Soon, there will be more like it, and they'll appear further and further away from Redcliffe. The magic Alexius is using is wildly unstable, and it's unraveling the world. You're asking me to take a lot on faith. I know what I'm talking about. I helped develop this magic. When I was still his apprentice, it was pure theory. Alexius could never get it to work. What I don't understand is why he's doing it. Ripping time to shreds just to gain a few hundred lackeys? He didn't do it for them. Took you long enough. Is he getting suspicious? No, but I shouldn't have played the illness card. I thought he'd be fussing over me all day. My father's joined a cult, to Vinta Supremacists. They call themselves Venatori. And I can tell you one thing. Whatever he's done for them, he's done it to get to you. Alexius is your father. Why are you working against him? For the same reason Dorian works against him. I love my father, and I love my country. But this? Cults? Time magic? What he's doing now is madness. For his own sake, you have to stop him. It would also be nice if he didn't rip a hole in time. There's already a hole in the sky. 
Why would he rearrange time and indenture the Mage Rebellion just to get to me? They're obsessed with you, but I don't know why. Perhaps because you survived the Temple of Sacred Ashes. You can close the rifts. Maybe there's a connection. Or they see you as a threat. If the Venatori are behind those rifts saw the breach in the sky, they're even worse than I thought. All this for me? And I didn't get Alexius anything. Send him a fruit basket. Everyone loves those. You know you're his target. Expecting the trap is the first step in turning it to your advantage. I can't stay in Redcliffe. Alexius doesn't know I'm here, and I want to keep it that way for now. But whenever you're ready to deal with him, I want to be there. I'll be in touch. Oh, and Felix, try not to get yourself killed. There are worse things than dying, Dorian. We don't have the manpower to take the castle. Either we find another way in, or give up this nonsense and go and get the Templars. Redcliffe is in the hands of a Magister. This cannot be allowed to stand. The letter from Alexius asked for the Herald of Andraste by name. It's an obvious trap. So we've heard from Magister Alexius. I expected as much. And yet some of us want to sit and do nothing. Not this again. Redcliffe Castle is one of the most defensible fortresses in Ferelden. It has repelled thousands of assaults. If you go in there, you'll die. And we'll lose the only means we have of closing these rifts. I won't allow it. And if we don't even try to meet Alexius, we lose the mages and leave a hostile foreign power on our doorstep. Even if we could assault the keep, it would be for naught. An Orlesian Inquisition's army marching into Ferelden would provoke a war. Our hands are tied. The Magister... Has outplayed us. The Magister's son, Felix, told me Alexius is in a cult that's obsessed with me. I doubt they'll graciously receive our apologies and go about their business. They will remain a threat and a powerful one unless we act. We cannot accept defeat now. There must be a solution. Other than the main gate, there's got to be another way into the castle. A sewer, a water course, something. There's nothing I know of that would work. Wait. There is a secret passage into the castle, an escape route for the family. It's too narrow for our troops, but we could send agents through. Too risky. Those agents will be discovered well before they reach the Magister. That's why we need a distraction. Perhaps the envoy Alexius wants so badly. While they're focused on Lavallon, we break the Magister's defenses. It could work, but it's a huge risk. Fortunately, you'll have help. This man says he has information about the Magister and his methods, Commander. Your spies will never get past Alexius's magic without my help. So if you're going after him, I'm coming along. The plan puts you in the most danger. We can't in good conscience order you to do this. We can still go after the Templars if you'd rather not play the bait. It's up to you. Announce us. The invitation was for Master Lavellan only. The rest of you must wait here. Where I go, they go. My Lord Magister, the agents of the Inquisition have arrived. My friend, it's so good to see you again. And your associates, of course. I'm sure we can work out some arrangement that is equitable to all parties. Are we mages to have no voice in deciding our fate? Fiona, you would not have turned your followers over to my care if you did not trust me with their lives. Of course she trusts you, Alexius. I'm sure lots of people put their lives in your hands. You have one of those faces. Yes, the Magisterium tells me that so often. Shall we begin our talk?
The Inquisition needs mages to close the breach, and I have them. So, what shall you offer in exchange? Nothing at all. I'm just going to take the mages and leave. And how do you imagine you'll accomplish such a feat? He knows everything, Father. Edix, what have you done? We made sure to disarm your trap before we came in. I hope you don't mind. I've yet to see your cleverness, I'm afraid. You walk into my stronghold with your stolen mark, a gift you don't even understand, and think you're in control. You're nothing but a mistake. If I'm a mistake, what exactly was the breach supposed to accomplish? It was to be a triumphant moment for the Elder One. For this world. Father, listen to yourself. Do you know what you sound like? He sounds exactly like the sort of villainous cliché everyone expects us to be. Dorian, I gave you a chance to be a part of this. You turned me down. The Elder One has power you would not believe. He will raise the Imperium from its own ashes. Blah, blah, my cult is better than yours. I've heard it a thousand times. Well, you know, it's a chance for the Imperium to really one-up that whole starting the Blight thing. He will make the world bow to mages once more. We will rule from the Boric Ocean to the frozen seas. You can't involve my people in this. Alexius, this is exactly what you and I talked about never wanting to happen. Why would you support this? Stop it, Father. Give up the Venatori. Let the Southern Mages fight the Breach, and let's go home. No. It's the only way, Felix. He can save you. Save me? There is a way. The Elder One promised, if I undo the mistake at the Temple... I'm going to die. You need to accept that. Seize them, Venatori. The Elder One demands this man's life. <laughs> Your men are dead, Alexius. You are a mistake. You should never have existed. No! Interesting. It's probably not what Alexius intended. The rift must have moved us to what? The closest confluence of arcane energy? The last thing I remember, we were in the castle hall. Let's see. If we're still in the castle, it isn't. Oh, of course, it's not simply where, it's when. Alexius used the amulet as a focus. It moved us through time. That doesn't sound good. It sounds terrible. Depending on when we are and what happened while we were away. Let's look around, see where the rift took us. Then we can figure out how to get back. If we can. What was Alexius trying to do? I believe his original plan was to remove you from time completely. If that happened, you would never have been at the Temple of Sacred Ashes or mangled his Elder One's plan. I think your surprise in the Castle Hall made him reckless. He tossed us into the Rift before he was ready. I counted it. The magic went wild, and here we are. Makes sense? It just seems so insane. I don't even want to think about what this will do to the fabric of the world. We didn't travel through time so much as punch a hole through it and toss it into the privy. But don't worry. I'm here. I'll protect you. There were others in the hall. Could they have been drawn through the rift? I doubt it was large enough to bring the whole room through. Alexius wouldn't risk catching himself or Felix in it. They're probably still where and when we left them. In some sense, anyway. Lexius mentioned an Elder One in the Hall. Do you know who he was talking about? Leader of the Venatori, I suspect. Some Magister aspiring to Godhood. It's the same old tune. Let's play with magic we don't understand. It will make us incredibly powerful. Evidently, it doesn't matter if you rip apart the fabric of time in the process. You have a plan to get us back, I hope. I have some thoughts on that. They're lovely thoughts. Like little jewels. You're... alive. Oh, I saw you... disappear.
spear into the rift. What is the date? I need to know how much time has passed. Harvest Mir. 9.42, Dragon. 9.42? Then we've missed an entire year. I'm here now. No matter what, I'll drive them all back to Tevinter. Not Tevinter. Alexius serves the Elder One more powerful than the Maker. No one challenges him and lives. That Magister is going to regret he didn't just kill me. Our only hope is to find the amulet that Alexius used to send us here. If it still exists, I can use it to reopen the rift at the exact spot we left. Maybe. Good. I said, maybe. It might also turn us into paste. You must try. Your spy master, Leliana. She is here. Find her. Quickly. Before the Elder One learns you're here. You're not dead. You're supposed to be dead. There was a burn on the ground and everything. Alexius didn't kill us. His spell sent us through time. This is our future. Well, it's my present. And in my past, I definitely saw you both die. We're going to fight Alexius and see about fixing all this. You coming? Why? You want to see what other tricks he's learned? If we find him, we might be able to get back to our own time and stop all this before it happens. Exciting, yes? Alexius isn't the one you need to worry about. It's his elder one. He killed the Empress of Orlais and used the confusion to launch an invasion of the South. The army was all demons. You ever fought a demon army? I don't recommend it. We'll make Alexius regret what he's done. Let's move. No time like the present. Untrust these sacred knickers. You're alive. But where were you? How did you escape? We didn't escape. Alexius sent us into the future. Everything that happens to you is weird. You might be right about that. I'm always right. And when I'm not, I lie about it. So, what are you doing here? Or did you come back just to trade quips with me? We get to Alexius, and I just might be able to send us back to our own time. Simple, really. <laughs> you and I have very different definitions of the word simple. You want to take on Alexius? I'm in. Let's go. You will break. I will die first. Or you will. That was impressive. Anger is stronger than any pain. Do you have weapons? Good. The Magister's probably in his chambers. You aren't curious how we got here? No. Alexius sent us into the future. This, his victory, his Elder One, it was never meant to be. I need to find Alexius and reverse the spell. If we can get back to our present time, we can prevent this future from ever happening. And mages always wonder why people fear them. No one should have this power. It's dangerous and unpredictable. Before the breach, nothing we did. Enough. This is all pretend to you. Some future you hope will never exist. I suffered. The whole world suffered. It was real. It's over, Alexius. So it is. I knew you would appear again. Not that it would be now, but I knew I hadn't destroyed you. My final failure. Was it worth it? 
Everything you did to the world, to yourself. It doesn't matter now. All we can do is wait for the end. I'll admit, I expected a bit more fight out of you. Alas, I am not the foe you remember. All that I fought for, all that I betrayed, and what have I wrought? Ruin and death, that is nothing else. The Elder One comes for me, for you, for us all. <sighs> Felix! That's Felix? Make his breath, Alexius. What have you done? He would have died, Dorian. I saved him. Please, don't hurt my son. I'll do anything you ask. You didn't save him, Alexius. No one should live like that. <laughs> no. No! He wanted to die, didn't he? All those lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. He didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. I know you cared for him. Once he was a man to whom I compared all others. Sad, isn't it? This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used, and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! The Elder One! You have to hurry. This is bad. We'll head out front. Keep them off your tail. We'll make this count. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spell. You have as much time as I have arrows. Though darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. You failed, Alexius. How forgiving is your Elder One? You won. There is no point extending this charade. Felix. It's going to be all right, Father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Enchanter Fiona, Queen Anora. When I granted your mages sanctuary, I thought it was understood that they would not force my people from their homes. Your Majesty, let me assure you, we never intended any of this. Your intentions ceased to matter when my people were threatened. I am rescinding my offer of sanctuary. You and your followers will leave for Elden at once. But we have hundreds who need protection. 
Where will we go? I should point out that we did come here for mages to close the breach. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? I've known a lot of mages. They can be loyal friends if you let them. Friends who make bad decisions, but still, loyal. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. A generous offer, but will the rest of the Inquisition honor it? The Breach threatens all of Thedas. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. Any chance of success requires your full support. Whether you accept the Inquisition's alliance or not, you will leave my kingdom. We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. They're not monsters, they're people. And they deserve the same respect as anyone else. This is not about respect. Even the strongest mages can be overcome by demons in conditions like these. Enough arguing. None of us were there. We cannot afford to second-guess our people. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the mages' aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. And here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. I got a taste of the consequences if we fail. Let's make sure we don't. We will not fail. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. And I'd hope to sit out the assault on the breach. Take a nap. Maybe go for a walk. What is it they say? No rest for the wicked. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're... staying. Oh, didn't I mention? The south is so charming and rustic, I adore it to little pieces. I must admit, I'm surprised. We both saw what could happen. What this Elder One and his cult are trying to do. Not everything from Tevinter is terrible. Some of us have fought for eons against this sort of madness. It's my duty to stand with you. That future will not come to pass. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with. Future or present. Excellent choice. But let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Halamshiral? Cows milking farmers? Give me time. I'm sure I'll surprise you. I suspect that's untrue. Unless you strip yourself naked and allow the Chantry to flog you into repentance. Now that would surprise me. I do wonder if you've considered what the support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern mages license to, well, be like mages back home. If that means they're anything like you, I approve. Ha! There aren't many mages back home like me. I'd believe that. I never fit in. Bloodstains are so difficult to clean, you see. So we're doomed to a future of blood magic, then? Not at first, but you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the Sun. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed, by inches. 
Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinti, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities, believe me. Of course I believe you. The moment I saw you, I thought, there's a man who knows quality. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinta in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. What do you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of De Winter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Tevinta? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Tevinta here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary, I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems... So much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war, and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. I find it strange that your mages don't rule anything at all. <laughs> actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a... Uh, convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium, exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinta Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. 
I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later. Lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soparati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families vie madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes, and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinta legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday, my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor sods don't realize that means he'll be a Quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a Quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. Just how often is blood magic used there? Oh, not at all. Not at all? That's what any Magister would tell you. They'd be convincingly offended by the notion too. Of course, what people call blood magic here, and what we consider blood magic, are two different things. What's considered actual blood magic in Tevinter? Blood magic isn't inherently dangerous. Using your own blood or that of a willing participant? What's the harm? The problem is that what's permitted only gets you so much power. And what if you need more? You always need more. That's where we get into sacrifices and demon summoning. None of that is done. Not officially. Behind closed doors, it's a different story. Real blood magic can give you an edge. A leg up against your opponents. It's safe to assume that any mage of rank does it. The rest are quietly shut out of power, to put it bluntly. You'd think the Templars would object. I imagine they did, long ago. Once, their investigations might have been sincere. Then their balls were cut off. Too inconvenient. Nowadays, only the friendless are accused. And most of them probably innocent. There must be some mages who oppose this. Of course. I do. And I'm not entirely alone. Occasionally, there'll be a Magister who makes noise. And then the reform talk begins. All very patriotic. Meanwhile, that Magister will be quietly shunned. Chances are, surprise, it's learned he was a Maleficar all along. Most learn to keep quiet. Me? <laughs> I enjoy the allure of pariahood. There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own divide. You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face, like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry, or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The Circles are in command. There are Circles of Magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce the Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. 
Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvellous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andraste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So the Imperial Divine is always a man. All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female Magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the South. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. I'm not sure about that myself. Doubt is good. I like doubt. It will keep you sane. Me? I've seen too much to believe I know everything. The world is bigger than I, even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe, but I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. I think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatorian. They won't. At least, not officially. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Kunari for what, 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, you've had it easy for far too long. Let's not forget that the Inquisition seems to be an arm of the Olesian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah. That is true. And? Did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. That's it. You don't question it. In the south, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? Is that what you call it? Treated poorly? Abuse heaped upon those without power 
isn't limited to Devinter, my friend. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked despondent, broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I suppose the Inquisition will judge him eventually. I wonder if there's any chance they'll show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? I was distracted, that's all. Distracted? By my wit and charm? I have plenty of both. How interesting to find someone so aware of his strengths. I'm a man of many talents. What can I say? I always assumed the elder one behind the Venatori was a magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinter, they say the Chantry's tales of magisters starting the blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very magisters. A dark spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Darkspawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? Why does that make you angry? Because the Imperium is my home. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth, but I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no, it was us all along. We destroyed the world. You didn't do anything. Those men did. A thousand years ago. True, except that one of them is up and walking around right now. Not to mention I have idiot countrymen who would happily follow him down that path again. No one will thank me, whatever happens. No one will thank you, either. You know that, yes? That's not why I'm doing this. I knew there was something clever about you. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius' son. He went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. The Blight caught up with him. Are you all right? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. That doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinta could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. With the two of you, Felix and I? What an odd question. No, 
I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around, you knew things could be better. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Thedas. I could watch you roam Skyhold all day. Here and there you'd run, checking in on your followers. Why don't they come to you, feed you grapes, rub your shoulders? I suppose it's more fun this way. For me, I mean. You're rather strapping. I've noticed you're rather strapping yourself. Of course you know. That only takes eyes. Luckily, I have those. <laughs> you do. A rather fetching pair. At any rate, you didn't pass by to hear me fawn. Something on your mind? You said Alexius was a mentor of yours. He was my patron, sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption, how we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he gave up. He stopped trying. Why did he give up? On a journey to Hosburg, a darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. And the guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while, and then we drifted apart. Sounds like he wasn't the only one who gave up. I told him to snap out of it, move on. I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. Plus, I was busy drinking. One must have priorities. You still went after him. It's true. What was I thinking? It's so cold down here. At any rate, he's fallen so low, I doubt he'll ever get up. Sad, really. I should go. You know where I'll be. My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the Tevinto. Is that a note of distaste I detect, Mother Giselle? I admit his presence here makes me uncomfortable, Inquisitor, but my feelings are of no importance. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? Familiar? We've never met, if that's what you're suggesting. I'm suggesting nothing. I'm only curious whether you know of his... situation. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... Why would his family contact you? Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry, but they know what I represent. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he does not care for me. Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. Just what kind of meeting do you have in mind? I believe they just want to talk, to understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. Somewhere private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. I imagine you'd be relieved to see him gone. If this is what it seems, and it works out, it might be better for all concerned. They don't want Dorian to know. That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse. 
and the letter implies he'd have goals. Yet, they are remorseful for whatever came before. This is a chance for dialogue. There is deceit in bringing the young man to this meeting without his foreknowledge, I know. But does it not lead to a greater kindness if there is potential for reconciliation? Are, are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venatori? Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. Take it your Dalish? Is that the correct word here? Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. Little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. And I appreciate your help, Dorian. Mutual appreciation is a grand way to begin. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son? What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman, hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinter. You think your father would actually do that? No, although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with a message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married. Because you left. That too. Let's go meet this retainer then. I wonder how much my father paid this man to wait around just in case I showed. <sighs> we'll find out soon enough. Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just... What? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? <sighs> this is how it has always been. Considering you lied to get him here, Dorian has every right to be furious. You don't know the half of it. But maybe you should. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. I'll need you to explain that. Did I stutter? Men and the company thereof as in sex. Surely you've heard of it. I've more than heard of it, actually. No. The Herald of Andraste. 
I am shocked and scandalized. Such sarcasm. You're not exactly subtle, O oh Lord Inquisitor. I should have known that's what this was about. No. You don't get to make those assumptions. You know nothing about the Inquisitor. This is not what I wanted. I'm never what you wanted, Father. Or had you forgotten? That's a big concern in Tevinta, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tevinta family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. So that's what all of this is about? Who you sleep with? That's not all it's about. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you? Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. I think it's time we left. I agree. He's a good man, my father. Deep down. He taught me principle is important. He cares for me in his way, but he won't ever change. I can't forgive him for what he did. I won't. He tried to change you? Out of desperation. I wouldn't put on a show, marry the girl, keep everything unsavory, private and locked away. Selfish, I suppose. Not to want to spend my entire life screaming on the inside. He was going to do a blood ritual. Alter my mind. Make me... acceptable. I found out. I left. Can blood magic actually do that? Maybe. It could also have left me a drooling vegetable. It crushed me to think he found that absurd risk preferable to scandal. Part of me has always hoped he didn't really want to go through with it. If he had, I can't even imagine the person I would be now. I wouldn't like that, Dorian. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there, even if it didn't work out. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I think you're very brave. Brave? It's not easy to abandon tradition and walk your own path. At any rate, time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. I don't know what you think you're doing. I'm being clucked at by a hen, evidently. Don't play the fool with me, young man. If I wanted to play the fool, I could be rather more convincing, I assure you. Your glib tongue does you no credit. You'd be surprised at the credit my tongue gets me, Your Reverence. Oh, I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your Worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinto, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still, you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. Oh? I'd like to hear what these rumors are, exactly. 
I could not repeat them, Your Worship. Repeat them? So you've shared them before? I... see. I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor. Only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. This sort of thing happens often, does it? <laughs> More than anyone tells you. No one knows their own reputation. Until someone helpfully informs them. There is that. She meant well, if that's of any concern. I don't know if you're aware, but the assumption in some corners is that you and I are... intimate. That's not the worst assumption they could have, is it? I don't know. Is it? Do you always answer a question with a question? Would you like me to answer in some other fashion? <laughs> if you're capable. If you're capable. The nonsense you speak. You realize this makes the rumors somewhat true? Evidently. We might have to explore the full truth of them later, in private. We call Gerion Alexius of Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempt in assassination, on your own life, no less. Tevinter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former magister as you see fit. After what he's done, it's time someone did. I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you saved, the acclaim you've gathered. You'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, Inquisitor. Your magic was theoretically impossible, Alexius. I could use people like you. Your sentence is to serve, under guard, as a researcher on all things magical for the Inquisition. No execution. <sighs> Very well. I'm told you have Alexius researching magic for you. Research is always what made him happiest. Perhaps I'll even go talk to him eventually. One word of advice. If he suggests altering time as a way to solve all your problems, give it a pass. I'd like to talk to you about something. How ominous. Has my father finally come up with a decent offer to buy me from you? No, it's nothing like that. I wouldn't blame you. My father's a very wealthy man. I meant I wanted to talk about us. <laughs> I see. What's the latest news on the us front, then? I was hoping to get to know you better. <laughs> you and I? People will talk. Let them. All right. We'll see how this goes. Don't say I didn't warn you. Fancy meeting you here. I've been told something about an amulet. How did you hear that? Oh, Liliana. Of course she would find out. Don't make an issue of it. I don't want someone solving my personal problems for me. I'll get the amulet back. Somehow. On my own. I'm not entirely certain what it is. The Parvus birthright. The flashy thing you show peons to make them tremble at your impressive lineage. 
I didn't leave Tavinta with much in the way of coin, so I sold it. Entirely forbidden, of course, and foolish, but I was desperate. I'll figure something out. You don't even like your family. Why would you want it back? Because it's mine, and it shouldn't be... passed around like candy. That's the only reason. It's reason enough. Leave it be. For something that seems so important, I'd have expected more than I'll get it somehow. It's not the only thing that's important. I lost the amulet. I may not have your resources, but I can't ask you to... You have too many people asking you for everything under the sun. I won't be one of them. Inquisitor. Good, good. This is exactly what I was hoping for. What? Is that why we're here? I said I wanted to do this myself. I don't want to be indebted to anyone, least of all you. I apologize, but that won't be possible. Do forgive me, Inquisitor. But when I heard of your association with Monsieur Pavis, I could not resist. It's not coin I seek for the amulet, but influence. Influence you possess, but which the young man does not. Provided, of course, you desire the amulet for your friend. Aren't you a merchant? Why not just sell it back? I am not a fence, monsieur. I only bought your friend's amulet because of what it is. I do business in the Imperium. Having a birthright, even one not your own, is most useful in select situations. Huh. He's got the right of it there. That's why I gave the young man so much. If he relinquished it, how is that my doing? You refuse to sell Dorian his amulet just to get me here. Mission accomplished. I am not attempting to manipulate you, my lord. I only wish equitable recompense. The League de Celestine is an organization of wealthy noblemen in Orlais. I would join, but I lack the lineage. If someone like you applied pressure, they would admit me. That would be worth the return of the amulet. What do you think, Dorian? Leave the man be. I got myself into this. I should get myself out of it. Perhaps you should accept your friend's help, monsieur. Confess, I know what you think, and he's not my friend. He's... Never mind what he is. As you desire. Even so, that is a price. I shall accept no other. Very well. I'll do as you ask. What? You're going to give in to this cretin? Do you want your amulet back? I... Yes, I do. I simply... Much obliged, your worship. The moment I receive an invitation from the League, I'll have the amulet delivered. It's been an honor doing business with you. Influence mongering. I don't want to be in your debt. I don't want to be in anyone's debt. You don't think... I don't want to discuss it. Here it is. Now I'm indebted to you. I never wanted this, I told you. I didn't do this so you would be indebted to me, Dorian. I did it for you. That's the problem. How is that a problem? Someone intelligent would cozy up to the Inquisitor if they could. It'd be foolish not to. He can open doors, get you whatever you want, shower you with gifts and power. That's what they'll say. I'm the Magister who's using you. I had no idea you were concerned about that. I don't care what they think about me. I care what they think about us. I was an ass earlier at the Merchants. It's my specialty. I apologize and thank you.
I'm going to stop before I say something syrupy, but I won't forget this, and I will repay you. Count on it. Have you been to your quarters lately by chance? Not recently. Do, when you have the time. There's something there that might interest you. I should go. Try not to kill anyone without me. So, it's all very nice, this flirting business. I am, however, not a nice man. So, here is my proposal. We dispense with the chit-chat and move on to something more primal. It'll set tongues wagging, of course. Not that they aren't already wagging. I suppose it really depends. How bad does the Inquisitor want to be? I thought you'd never ask. I like playing hard to get. And now? I'm gotten. I like your quarters. Do you now? Don't misunderstand. I'm not suggesting we venture into mutual domesticity. I just like your appointments. Ah. Not that I couldn't suggest some changes. Your taste is a little... austere. You seem a little distracted. Sex will do that. It's distracting. I heard a rumor. Very well, you've rooted me out. There is something I want. I'm curious where this goes, you and I. We've had fun. Perfectly reasonable to leave it here. Get on with the business of killing archdemons and such. Tell me what you want. All on me, then. Should it be all on me? <sighs> I like you. More than I should. More than might be wise. We end it here, I walk away. I won't be pleased, but I'd rather now than later. Later might be dangerous. Why dangerous? Walking away might be harder then. I want more than just fun, Dorian. Speechless, I see. I was expecting something different. Where I come from, anything between two men it's about pleasure. It's accepted, but taken no further. You learn not to hope for more. You'd be foolish to. You still feel that way? I'm beginning to learn otherwise. Care to, uh, inquisit me again? I'll be more specific in my directions this time. <laughs> Show off. I overheard you at the tavern, Blackwall, asking about the Inquisitor and I. I was unsure I'd heard correctly. You have a question? Are your whiskers quivering with curiosity? I would not pry into the Inquisitor's business. Are you certain? I can draw diagrams. No, thank you. You're smiling a great deal these days, Dorian. I always smile. People like my smile, and they should. I have excellent teeth. Do you always do it while staring dreamily into the distance? It depends how long until dinner. You and the Inquisitor, hey? What is that like? Jousting? Fewer horses, marginally. More cheering, definitely. <laughs> nice. So what's your estimation, Varric? Think we can win? You aren't asking me to give odds on our beloved Inquisitor's success. What would that look like? Three to one? <laughs> In his favor? After Corypheus pulled an archdemon out of his ass, are you joking? I'll take those odds. This is why I adore him so. I received a letter the other day, Dorian. Truly? It's nice to know you have friends. It was from an acquaintance in Tevinta expressing his shock at the disturbing rumors about your relationship with the Inquisitor. Rumors you were only too happy to verify, I assume. 
I informed him the only disturbing thing in evidence was his penmanship. Oh, thank you. I am not so quick to judge, darling. See that you give me no reason to feel otherwise. I heard a little rumor about you. Is that so? Indeed. Someone's been doing some training. As an assassin, no less. The skills involved are rather handy. I should say. With the amount of killing you do, a bit of flair's a fine thing. I don't kill that many people. Are you joking? I'm only surprised you didn't kill someone walking over here. At any rate, if you ever intend to make it an actual profession, do tell me. The Antivan Crows have nothing on the Imperium. I know people. Keep it in mind. I should go. Here I thought we were just getting to the good part. This is unexpected. We were falling. If this is the afterlife, the Chantry owes me an apology. This looks nothing like the Maker's bosom. No. The Inquisitor did something with the Mark. Opened another rift. I think... we're in the Fade. I've seen my father in the Fade. I've seen a demon pretending to be my sister in the Fade. But I've never seen this. It's not how I remember the Fade, either. The first time I entered the Fade, it looked like a lovely castle filled with gold and silks. I met a marvelous desire demon, as I recall. We chatted and ate grapes before he attempted to possess me. Perhaps the difference is that we are here physically. This is no one's dream. The stories say you walked out of the Fade at Haven. Was it like this? I don't know. I still can't remember what happened the last time I did this. Well, whatever happened at Haven, we can't assume we're safe now. That huge demon was right on the other side of that rift Eremond was using. And there could be others. Ah, oh, this is shitty. I'll fight whatever you give me, boss. But nobody said nothing about getting dragged through the ass end of Demon Town. In the real world, the rift with the demons in it was nearby. In the main hall. Can we get out the same way? It beats waiting around for demons to find us, right? There. Let's go. Greetings, Dorian. It is Dorian, isn't it? For a moment, I mistook you for your father. Rather called for?
Go! I'll cover you. No, you were right. The Wardens caused this mess. A Warden must... A Warden must help them rebuild. That's your job. Corypheus is mine. Alistair. Right. Good luck. I'll keep it off you. For the Warden! Right. Without the Nightmare to control them, the mages are free, and Corypheus loses his demon army. Though as far as they're all concerned, the Inquisitor broke the spell with the blessing of the Maker. They came out of this alive. As far as I'm concerned, they can tell whatever stories they like. That's how legends get started. Or at least that's what Varric always says. Inquisitor, the Archdemon flew off as soon as you disappeared. The Venatori Magister is unconscious but alive. Cullen thought you might wish to deal with him yourself. As for the Wardens, those who weren't corrupted helped us fight the demons. We stand ready to help make up for Clorel's tragic mistake. Where is Alistair? Warden Alistair is dead, thanks to all of you. He alone stood against Clorel's madness. If not for him, you'd be dead or slaves to a servant of the Blight. And you repaid that by branding him a traitor. Inquisitor, we have no one left of any significant rank. What do we do now? You leave. There was one warden among you who spoke up for what was right, and he's dead now. By the authority of the Inquisition, you are banished from Southern Thedas. A bit dramatic, if you ask me. Hope we don't need them later. Hawk will oversee your return to the Warden Fortress at Weishaupt. You have remarkably little here on early to winter history. All these gifts to the Inquisition, and the best they can do is the Malefica Imperio, trite propaganda. But if you want 20 volumes on whether Divine Galatea took a shit on Sunday, this is evidently the place to find it. That's the Dorian I know, critiquing every book in my library. I wouldn't have to if you could find some rebellious heretic archivist to join the cause. Are there rebellious archivists? Other than you, that is. If Corypheus ever starts burning masterworks of literature, I'm sure a few will pop up. Did I see something by Genitivi here? I could have sworn. What is this about, Dorian? When we fell into the chasm, into the Fade, I thought you were done for. I don't know if I can forgive you for that moment. Forgive me? You were right there with me the entire time. For making me think you were dead. You sent me ahead and then didn't follow. For just a moment, I was certain you wouldn't. I thought, this is it. This is where I finally lose him forever. Are you... all right? Alistair is gone. Ah. It's as I thought. The Fade is an ordeal under normal circumstances. To be the only real thing there... beyond description. That any of us made it out alive is difficult to believe. That you made it out... a miracle. You do realize... This feat hasn't been performed in over a thousand years. Corypheus and his contemporaries entered the Fade and began the Blights. In comparison. At least you were at my side. <laughs> no offense, but I'd almost rather I hadn't been. No sense of adventure? That's surprising. I've not your talent for survival. And not everyone is as discerning as I. If you can walk in the Fade, others will try to follow. 
knows what secrets Corypheus has revealed. Not all of them will be as lucky as you. What they could unleash. My advice? Keep this quiet. Let them speculate. Too many will see this as a challenge. That's a good idea. There are enough idiots in the world who think if they just use enough blood magic, their problems will vanish. It's exactly the sort of thing I want to stop back home. This... this I don't need. What I do need is a copy of the Liberalum. I'll wager I can find Corypheus' real name. If I can prove he was a grasping ankle biter with no family to speak of, the luster would come right off. Wish me luck. Good book? Ah! I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, are you blushing? What would I have to blush about? You tell me. It's of no interest to you, I'm certain. It's a book. I can see that. It's one of Varric's tales. Swords and Shields, the latest chapter. So you like to read? What's wrong with that? It's frivolous. There are more important things for me to do. That's just her favorite. Nobody asked you, Tavinta. <laughs> I couldn't finish the last one you lent me. I actually feel dumber for having tried. It's literature. Smutty literature. Whatever you do, don't tell Varric. Me? No. I would never. They're terrible. And magnificent. And this one ends in a cliffhanger. I know Varric is working on the next. He must be. You! You could ask him to finish it. Command him to... Pretend you don't know this about me. Gloat all you like. I have this one. Are you sassing me, Commander? I didn't know you had it in you. Why do I even... Inquisitor. Leaving, are you? Does this mean I win? Are you two playing nice? I'm always nice. You need to come to terms with my inevitable victory. You'll feel much better. Really? Because I just won, and <laughs> I feel fine. Don't get smug. There will be no living with you. I should return to my duties as well. Unless you would care for a game. Prepare the board, Commander. As a child, I played this with my sister. She would get this stuck-up grin whenever she won, which was all the time. My brother and I practiced together for weeks. Oh, the look on her face the day I finally won. Between serving the Templars and the Inquisition, I haven't seen them in years. I wonder if she still plays. You have siblings? Two sisters and a brother. Where are they now? They moved to South Reach after the Blight. I do not write to them as often as I should. Oh, it's my turn. You're about to relive those childhood defeats. This game is mine. Well, I believe the game is mine. Wait, what? Dorian cheats at this as well. And now presenting Grand Duke Gaspard de Chalon, and accompanying him, Lord Inquisitor Lavellan.
faith. Lord Dorian Pavis, member of the Circle of Arantium, son of Lord Magister Hallwood Pavis of Azaria. Sir, this is all so familiar. I half expect my mother to materialize from the crowd and criticize my manners. Is this how the elite of Tevinta carry on? You could almost mistake this for a soiree in the Imperium. The same double-dealing, elegant poison canapes. It's lacking only a few sacrificial slaves and some blood magic. But the night is still young. What if your mother were actually here? Where would we be then? Short one mage after he's dragged out by his earlobe. I'm having difficulty picturing that. Picture me a young boy of five years then. She certainly always has. Have you seen anything I should know about? I'm trying to keep watch for magic, you know, Tevinters. We can't cross a room without casting a spell. If there are Tevinter agents here, we'll find them. Don't wear yourself out mingling. I expect a dance before this is over. Dancing with the evil Magister, in full view of every noble in Orlay. How shocking. They'll live. You say that now. If you can find me ten silk scarves, I've got a dance that will really shock them. I'll be ready for your signal, provided this spicy punch isn't as strong as it seems. Have you seen anything I should know about? Did you see what that Marquis is wearing? That suit is a greater crime than anything we're looking for. Try not to get too drunk while I'm gone. You ask so much of me. There was an ancient dowager looking for you. Said she had twelve daughters. I told her you'd left already. You can thank me later or now. But you look lost in thought. Something on your mind? I'm just worn out. Tonight has been... very long. <laughs> you won. You saved the day. Literally, the day is saved. You should be celebrating. Enjoy yourself while you can. What you need is a distraction. I have just the thing. Let's dance. I was hoping you'd ask. Thank goodness one of us has a little initiative. <sighs> Marvelous business, the Winter Palace. Saving the day, reconciling lovers, mediating a civil war. So sugary, it's nauseating. All this dancing, politics, and murder. Ah, makes me a bit homesick. That's something you'd like to do more often, then. Watch as you twist an entire empire around your little finger. Yes, please. Of course, that leaves only to Winter. And it wouldn't work as well there. No? Why not? Our dances are so much more intense. If an evening lacks a murder, we sniff and call it a ball. I hope you tried the ham they were serving, by the way. Tasted of despair. It's fascinating. I need to talk to you. Just talk? Such a pity. I thought we could discuss what happens after. Ah, yes. After. Dreadful thing, after. Let's see. Assuming one or both of us aren't slaughtered along the way, what do you wish to happen? We could go our separate ways, if you prefer. I've been a port in a storm before. I would understand. Of course not. I want us to be together as long as we can. You're very sentimental for someone who's killed as many people as you have. You bring it out in me. Sweet maker. Next you'll be making calf eyes at puppies. I don't know what the future holds. For us or anything. That's my honest answer. Once Corypheus is defeated, when this is over, I'd like to talk about it more. a sight for sore eyes. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Popular topic. Anything specific? Corypheus is a figure out of Tevinter history. He was a magister. 
Yes, but that was a different time. The Imperium's power was at its peak then. The Civil War had ended, the Magisterium was united, its armies scooping up bits of Thedas like candy. The Magisters who entered the Black City, it was a demonstration of how exceptional Tevinta had become. But who were they? No one knows. There's no record of a Magister named Corypheus. All this happened 1400 years ago, before the Blight nearly wiped us out. There are no records. Today, people half believe it's all just a story. And that's what I believed. We have evidence the story is very much real. But not who Corypheus is. If he even remembers. There used to be families who claimed some of those Magisters as their own. That stopped when the Chantry appeared. Then it was shameful, and the families distanced themselves from the tale. All we know is that some men and women entered the Black City looking for the old gods. What did they find? According to Corypheus, nothing. And only he could tell us more. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. I need to talk to you. Oh. I am, as you say down south, all ears. I was hoping to steal a moment alone with you. You have but to ask. Amatus. Lead the way. Now that's a view. Get your blood going. One last push and we can lick our wounds. I wonder if Corypheus will show. I hope you're right about this temple, Morrigan. I could use a building or two. Do the woods discomfort you, Pavos? It's mostly the people trying to cut our heads off that manage that. At last, Mathal's sanctum. Let us proceed before Corypheus interferes. If he's here for a mirror, why'd Corypheus say he wants a well of sorrows? I am uncertain of what he referred to. You were guessing. Corypheus might not be after this alluvian. It might not even be here. Yes, I was wrong. Does that please you? Whatever the well of sorrows might be, Corypheus seeks it, and thus you must keep it from his grasp. Let's find this well before Corypheus' people do. Come on, we might catch them. Hold a moment. While they rush ahead, this leads to our true destination. We should walk the petitioner's path as before. You forget that army fighting for us out there? Longer we play around, the more Inquisition soldiers die. There's a hole. Jump in. Just a thought. Maybe rushing through this place like a mad bull isn't the best plan. Tis not what I expected. What was this chamber used for? Hmm. We're being watched. Venavis. You are unlike the other invaders. You have the features of those who call themselves Elven. You bear the mark of magic, which is familiar. How has this come to pass? What is your connection to those who first disturbed our slumber? They are my enemies, as well as yours. I am called Abelas. We are sentinels, tasked with standing against those who trespass on sacred ground. We wake only to fight, to preserve this place. Our numbers diminish with each invasion. I know what you seek. Like all who have come before you, you wish to drink from the Vira Belasan. The place of the Way of Sorrows. He speaks of the well. It is not for you. It is not for any of you. What is this Vera Belisan exactly? It is a path, one walked only by those who toiled in Mithal's favor. He speaks of priests, perhaps. More than that, you need not know. We came to stop Corypheus. He's here to take your well, not I. 
I believe you. Trespassers you are, but you have followed rites of petition. You have shown respect to Mithal. If these others are enemies of yours, we will aid you in destroying them. When this is done, you shall be permitted to depart. And never return. I'll admit the idea of fighting the last of their kind does not thrill me. Consider carefully. You must stop Corypheus, yes? But you may also need the well for your own. I accept your offer. You will be guided to those you seek. As for the Vera Belisan, it shall not be despoiled. Even if I must destroy it myself. No! Hurry! You heard his parting words, Inquisitor. The elf seeks to destroy the Well of Sorrows. So the Sanctum is despoiled at last. You would have destroyed the Well yourself, given the chance. To keep it from your grasping fingers. Better it be lost than bestowed upon the undeserving. Fool. You'd let your people's legacy rot in the shadows. Corypheus needed Samson to use the well. Without him, there's no vessel to claim it. The moment we leave, he will send more forces to secure this place. The well clearly offers power, Inquisitor. If that power can be turned against Corypheus, can you afford not to use it? Do you even know what you ask? As each servant of Mithal reached the end of their years, they would pass their knowledge on through this. All that we were, all that we knew, it would be lost forever. Look around you. Everything your people were, it's already gone. It is. Why remain? Why perform a duty without purpose? You have shown respect to Mithal, and there is a righteousness in you I cannot deny. Is that your desire? To partake of the Vera Belisan as best you can? To fight your enemy? I'll take anything that might help against Corypheus, no matter the price. So I see. The fear of Elisan may be too much for a mortal to comprehend. Brave it if you must. But know you this. You shall be bound forever to the will of Mithal. Bound to a goddess who no longer exists, if she ever did. Bound as we are bound. The choice is yours. Is it possible this Mithal might still exist? Anything is possible. Elven legend states that Mithal was tricked by Fen Harel and banished to the beyond. Elven legend is wrong. The Dread Wolf had nothing to do with her murder. Murder? I, I said nothing of. She was slain, if a god truly can be, betrayed by those who destroyed this temple. Yet the Virabella San remains, as do we. That is something. Are you leaving the temple? Our duty ends. Why remain? The Imperium went to great lengths to expunge elven history. You might be the last to know the truth. Would the elves of your lands listen to the truth? They might. Would it hurt to try? It very well may, Shemlin. Yes. It may be that only Uthenera awaits us. The blissful sleep of eternity never to awaken, if fate is kind. You can walk away from the temple, just like that. After you drink, nothing remains to hold us.
I am willing to pay the price the well demands. I am also the best suited to use its knowledge in your service. Of those present, I alone have the training to make use of this. Let me drink, Inquisitor. You alone? This is my heritage. I have studied the oldest lore. I have delved into mysteries of which you could only dream. Can you honestly tell me there is anyone better suited? I would be. You lead the Inquisition. This is not a risk you can take. I have the best chance of making use of the well for everyone. Let me drink. You're not concerned about the price. Bound forever to the will of Mithal. Bound to the will of a dead god? It seems an empty warning. Perhaps a compulsion yet remains. Who can say otherwise? I do not fear it, even so. I hate to say it, but Abelos's plan to destroy the well may be the best one. What happens when Corypheus comes for you again? He is immortal. The wisdom of the well may include a way to destroy him. Give me this and I fight at your side. I shall be your sword. Looking at it, listening to it. That's not just knowledge from the ancient elven priests. It's their will. How would you know such a thing? That's what Abelas was telling us. The collective will of the priests puts anyone who drinks under a compulsion, a gas. Can't you feel it? That would match the legends, but it does not tell us what the gas entails. I would still use the well, but you are right. We must be cautious. Thoughts? You're asking me? This is a lot of... weird... I barely understand how any of this works. Any chance this well could help us against Corypheus? I say you take it. I don't want to risk losing you to a well. Enough deliberation. Give me your decision. If anyone is to use the well, it will be me. So you will take what little knowledge you can understand and let the rest go to waste? And who's to say it will go to waste? I do. Perhaps it is better this way. Do as you will with the Well of Sorrows, Inquisitor. But be careful. Come through this, I swear I'll kill you. Not dead. Well, that's a relief. So, good? Bad? I'm dying to know. Ah! Ah! The Illuvian! 
What happened at the Elven Temple? It's got me thinking. I should go back, shouldn't I? To Tevinter. Once this is done, if we're still alive. All my talk of how terribly wrong things are back home. But what do I do about it? Nothing. How does this relate to the Elven Temple? It was history, right there, staring us in the face. Maybe my people can atone for what we've done. There is something still left to restore. Maybe not all of us want to, but that could be altered. If you can change minds, so can I. You would just leave? What about us? Trust me, Amethyst. It would give me no pleasure to leave your side. You make monumental decisions affecting the entire world. How can I not consider some of my own? But I need you at my side. Now more than ever. Emotional blackmail is a fine thing to pull out of your arsenal. But I didn't. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll think about it. Closely. This is your fault, remember? You inspired me with your marvelous antics. You're shaping the world, for good or ill. How could I aspire to do any less? If it means proving that Tevinter can be better, that there's hope even for my homeland, I would do anything. As for you, Inquisitor, there is an ancient altar deep within a shaded wood. Go to it. Summon the dragon that is its guardian. Master it in combat, and it is yours to command against Corypheus. Fail and die. Wait! Mother said you must summon a dragon at an ancient altar. Do you know where that is? I think so. It's a place dedicated to Mithal. As, no doubt, is the guardian you must battle. Pray my mother has not led you astray, Inquisitor. She is not above doing so for her own amusement. Did you find what you need, Inquisitor? I can match the dragon. Corypheus is another story. Then all that remains is to find Corypheus before he comes to us. We've been looking for his base since all this began, with no success. His dragon must come and go from somewhere. Oh, what about the deep roads? We could send word to Orzammar, a higher envoys to... did that? But why? Either I close the breach again, or it swallows the world. But that's madness. Wouldn't it kill him as well? Inquisitor, we have no forces to send with you. We must wait for them to return from the Arbor Wilds. Just as Corypheus expects, I suppose. Where is your maker now? Call him. Call down his wrath upon me. You cannot, for he does not exist. I am Corypheus. I shall deliver you from this lie in which you linger. Bow before your new god and be spared. Never! As you wish. I knew you would come. It ends here, Corypheus. I'm so rich. Most 
successful in foiling my plans, but let us not forget what you are. A thief in the wrong place, at the wrong time, an interloper, a gnat. We shall prove here, once and for all, which of us is worthy of godhood. You're not proving anything by talking. of the Golden City, cross the ages. Do not, ancient ones, I beseech you. If you exist, if you ever truly existed, aid me now. Solus, the orb. Corypheus is dead. That's the important thing. Yet so much has been lost. There's more, isn't there? It was not supposed to happen this way. No matter what comes, I want you to know you shall always have my respect. Inquisitor! Are you alive? Then it's over. How lovely. And you're alive. And I'm alive. Incredible, isn't it? And the sky is healed, healthy, whole. There's just that left to remember. Looks that way. What do we do now? We go back to Skyhold.
A moment, my lord. My agents have found no trace of Solus. He has simply vanished. If he does not wish to be found, there's likely nothing we can do. But I will keep looking. Why would he just leave? Something must be wrong. You said he was upset about the orb. That can't be the only reason. I was passing through the hall this morning and a serving girl saw me and squealed. Actually squealed, dropped her laundry and everything. Such a mess. She was completely breathless. You were at the battle with the evil one, weren't you? I didn't even get a chance to answer. She hugged me. Hugged me. This is your influence. <laughs> Admitted you're having a ball. <laughs> I don't trust camaraderie, all these people smiling, buying me drinks. It's unnatural. Mind you, I can't say I hate the notion of being the good to Winter. I suppose you can't all be evil bastards. The blacksmith said that, and he spat when we first met. I hope my father hears. He will shit his small clothes from shock, I swear. I'm happy you're here, after all that's happened. I fully expected to die. It would have been thematically appropriate. And you, you could have been a martyr. Oh, the songs they would have composed. There will still be songs. Yes, but they won't have the same gravitas. We'll just have to be satisfied with being alive. And together, I've decided to stay with the Inquisition. For now. You will? There's no you, Interventor. What else matters? Going somewhere, Amatis? You didn't think one brief chat would be enough, did you? Define enough. Insolence. I like it. See? Much better. Yes, yes, I'm sure you have all the things to say. Two things in private before you run off. First, you are terribly dull and I hate you. What's the second? I hope this ends soon. Duke Cyril will wish to greet you on behalf of Olay. I believe he is currently speaking with the Tevinter Ambassador. Many of your friends have returned as well. I hope you have a chance to speak with them before the Exalted Council begins. The Imperium sent an ambassador? Yes, Your Worship. Dorian Pavas has taken the chance to return from Tevinter. It will be good to see him again. I owe him my apology. I allowed my distrust of Tevinter to cloud my judgment. I am glad you saw more clearly than I did. You're going to apologize to Dorian? I have little patience for those who cannot admit they were wrong, Your Worship. Myself included. I will have to make my apology somewhere public. He will want an audience for his reaction. How have you been? It seems ages since we've spoken. How are your international relations with our favorite Tevinta Magister-to-be? I would never kiss and tell, Vivian. You know that. Merely expressing concern for your well-being, my dear. Someone ought to. Ole is on your side, Lord Parvis. The Inquisition's support is not a thing to lose lightly. Which is why the Orlesian court is circling it with a net and collar? 
But you'll have to excuse me. I see an old friend I must greet. Amatus, wading through all the pomp and circumstance I see. You were back after being away in Tavinta for a month, and this is how you greet me. I have an apology ready. What have you learned about this council? Orle wants the Inquisition tamed, Ferelden wants it gone, the Chantry medals, and Tavinta sends but one ambassador. That's me, by the way. A reward for my interest in the South. Thankfully, Ambassador Pavis is a token appointment. Call on me as you like. Oh. Is everything all right? Yes. Well, I wanted to speak with you, and now you're here. Should I leave and come back later so you can try again? Always with clever suggestions. Maybe you should sit. I can stand. Maybe I should sit. Inquisitor, I want you to know that I am your friend. I will always be your friend. Oh, well, that's... So I hope to give you sound advice on this momentous day. Do what is in your heart, my friend, no matter what anyone might tell you. Maybe I should leave and come back. I think I missed the beginning. Oh, I'm talking about marriage. Marriage? Of course, Dorian being to Winter will raise eyebrows across the Empire, but if that is you... You're not proposing... to anyone. I am going to kill Varric. Why do I believe everything he says? Why? He said I was going to propose. He... mentioned a proposal. I suppose I filled in the blanks. Or he did this on purpose. That dwarf gets entirely too much joy from my discomfort. I might get married. I've thought about it. I suspected as much. Being Inquisitor has brought you good things. Many good things. But only a few have been by your choice. Take what happiness you can from those, and do not let them go. That is all I meant to say. Advice from a friend, for the days to come. As the most eloquent dwarf you know, Sparkles... Speech! Speech! Way too much speech. Varric, there's really no need. What's going on? Inquisitor! You're just in time. Sparkles, the Imperium doesn't deserve you. Or wants you. It, it may even kill you. But we'll miss you. If it counts. And you didn't know. Okay, folks. Time to take the party elsewhere. Tom never wanted any. I swear. Uh, leave him. It's true. I couldn't stay away from Tavinta forever. I'm leaving as soon as the Exalted Council is done. But you weren't going to tell me that or discuss it with me first. I didn't want you to find out like this. Frankly, I've been dreading this conversation, but here it is. My father is dead. Assassinated, I believe. 
I received notice this morning. A perversely cheerful letter congratulating me on assuming his seat in the Magisterium. I haven't seen him since Redcliffe. I had no idea he would keep me as his heir, or why. This ambassadorship was his doing. Whether to support me or his legacy, I'll never know. I have to go back. You'll need help. I could go with you. Not this time, Amatus. I won't be entirely without support. Mayveris has gathered other Magisters who feel as we do. We'll be an actual faction in the Magisterium. I'll teach them manners, take them shopping. It'll be fun. So you'll truly be a Magister? Oh, yes. I can't wait to degrade the Magisterium with my presence. A new outfit is required. And then what? I find my father's killers and kill them back. Then I find those giving to Vintra a bad name and kill them. They're most likely the same people, so that should make the job easier. What of us? This is it, then? Nonsense. There will always be an us. We'll just be... farther apart for a time. Now, now, don't pout. I'll put that expression on a statue, and then you'll be sorry. You think this is funny? Nothing about this is funny. I am sorry, for what it's worth. I guess there's nothing more to say. There is one thing. A present. A going away present. It's a sending crystal. Amazing what friendship with the Inquisition gives you access to. If I get in over my head, or you're overwhelmed with sorrow for lack of my velvety voice... Magic. What? You didn't think I would just leave and you'd never hear from me again, did you? You are the man I love, Amatus. Nothing will truly keep us apart. Now let's finish the good wine before the others get back. Quite the party, wasn't it? I hear it left the Orlesians and Ferelden's completely aghast. Andraste's herald, the Inquisitor, toasting a Tevinter Magister. Not a bad scandal to leave on. Thank you, Your Holiness. Now, Artigan, as to your concerns. The Inquisition established an armed presence in Ferelden territory. You outright seized Caer Bronock in Crestwood. Yes, from bandits. Would you like us to give it back to them? Your help was appreciated two years ago, Inquisitor. Now order has been restored, yet you remain. Invading under pretext of restoring order is exactly what the Grey Wardens did to us centuries ago, and we exiled them. That was Ferelden's mistake, just as exiling the Wardens at Adaman Fortress was regrettably the Inquisition's mistake. Of course Orle tolerates this interference. Without the Inquisition, Selene would have neither her throne nor her elven... Marquise. Rest assured, Tegan, the Empire of Orle will not stand idle if the Inquisition oversteps its bounds. Unlike Ferelden, however, Orle understands that these were the well-intentioned mistakes of a young organization. An organization in need of a guiding hand. Yours, no doubt. Pardon me, Inquisitor. Sister Leliana asked to speak with you in private. Something has come up. I'll be back. What? This is highly irregular. Are we not even worth the Inquisitor's time? Inquisitor, I thought you would want to see this. Canary warrior in full armor. How did he get into the Winter Palace? Would the Iron Bull know anything about this? I asked, and he is as surprised as we are. Since becoming Talvashov, he has had no contact with his people. He seems frustrated at not knowing more. So what would the left hand of the Divine see when she looked at this? This is a warrior, not a spy. Part of the Antam, the Canari military. 
Most of his wounds come from a fight against someone using magic, but at least a few are from a blade. He was badly hurt, separated from his allies, and made it here before he died. But how? Deadly mysteries at the Winter Palace. Throw in a Hallas statue and some Caprice coins, and it's just like old times. Can Josephine manage the diplomats while I look around? She will be fine. It's all speeches and posturing for the first few days anyway. I will ask Divine Victoria to call a recess for now. I will also have our friends ready themselves for battle if need be. You think that's likely? I think the Exalted Council may be more exciting than we expected. This is the crossroads. Morrigan brought me here while showing me the Alluvians. I'd forgotten all the colors. Everything looks gray and murky to me. I wonder if it somehow looks different to elves. Scorch marks everywhere. This is the work of a mage. A powerful one. I can still feel the heat crackling. We need to find out why these Kunari were here, and who did this to them. Atisha Valen, Fenharel and Athadra. The elves bound a spirit here. It feels old. Very old. What does it want? Nuvenas Menahelami. Tears Belasama. I think I know what to say. Armelana de Thavrin. Rivas Viranaris. Ame Lathanas. That worked, I think. <laughs> this is Fen Harel, helping former slaves as a mortal, not a god. He took great pains to renounce his supposed divinity. Fen Harel sounds like quite the rebel. The old elven gods must have simply loved that. Here we go again. What a change of pace from the Winter Palace. A clear sky, a beautiful view, and yes, fields and fields of stripweed as far as the eye can see. Stripweed? Terrible stuff. Looks like grass, stings like a knife, and causes sores if you so much as brush against it. So, of course, everyone in Manrathus insists it makes a very decent tea. Hidden weapons. These freed slaves actually fought back against the Evanuris, posing as gods. Interesting word, Evanuris. If all it means is mage leader, well, they were basically magisters. I'm moving up in the world to Vinter Ambassador. Fancy. Sad that it doesn't come with a stipend, or at least a decorative pin. What is this ambassadorship about exactly? I believe my father set it up, but the Imperium certainly didn't object. They'd love for the Inquisition to fall apart, so they're happy if it seems they consider this council a waste of time. That makes no sense. No? If Dread to Vinter actually pushed for the Inquisition's end, everyone else would disagree on principle. So they send a nobody pariah and hope for the best. Makes perfect sense to me. Any thoughts about the Exalted Council? A few. Divine Victoria needs a new tailor for one. Cassandra in a flowy dress just seems wrong. And that hat does her no favors. As for this whole Exalted Council business, well... I warned you once that no one would thank you for saving the world. Sadly, I'm always right. So long as the Inquisition's around to remind them they're not really in charge, they'll never sleep comfortably. Whether they have the guts to take action, I suppose we'll see. Another time. I look forward to it. Cold stone, dark tunnels, and surrounded by extremely hostile canari. Not the place I'd have chosen for a romantic homecoming, Amatus. Wandering into peril is practically how we met. Oh yes, practically a second honeymoon. Alam Sharal's guest suites are legendary. I've always wanted to try a wyvern down bed. Can Josephine arrange something? Look at all of this. What a pity. 
the destruction of the library. It's a tragic waste. Actually, I meant the elves. To build an entire empire on the foundation of magic. So did the Imperium. Although we haven't reached the entire libraries in the Fade stage, yet. The elves trusted completely that the world as it was would never change. This rubble is the legacy of that trust. I know you want to save the Imperium, but be careful, Dorian darling. If it crumbles beneath you, be ready to jump. I always am. Look at this place. Now that we have so many samples, how hard would it be to build alluviens of our own? After these past few years, it would just be good to create something magical that is also helpful for a change. Is that wise? If I get around to it, I'll send you an alluvien, Cassandra. Striking women can never be flattered by too many reflections. <laughs> if you get around to it, shall I be forced to accept? If they're gonna stuff me into politics, I've gotta have some fun on the side. Your agents confirm there are Gatlock battles in Denerin's palace? Yes, and in Valroyo and across the Free Marches. The Winter Palace is not the only target. The Canari are one order from destroying every noble house in the known world. Oh, there is a bright side. Warning the ambassadors will remind them of the Inquisition's value. Not when the Inquisition is responsible for that threat. I take it you have new information. The elven servant handling the barrels confessed to working for the Canari. But the servant was Orlesian. That implicates Orle, not us. But the barrels arrived at the Winter Palace on the Inquisition Supply Manifest. <sighs> How are we supposed to fight a war when we can't even trust our own people? Do you know who got the barrels onto the Inquisition Manifest? Yes, several of the Inquisition's elven workers have gone missing. I had their backgrounds checked. They joined the Inquisition after fleeing the chaos in Kirkwall. I remember when Kirkwall was at its worst. Many of the city's elves converted to the Kune, trying to find a better life. And the Canari turned them into spies. A few years ago, we railed at the mages at Redcliffe for becoming corrupt. We did the same to the Grey Wardens. <laughs> Look at us now. I fought to protect the Inquisition in this exalted council. And for what? So we could deceive and threaten those we claimed to protect? Once we locate the spies... This isn't about the spies! You hid the Kunari body. You've all but seized control of the Winter Palace. We did what was right, not what was politically convenient. Do you know what this has cost us with Orle and Ferelden? They are planning to dismantle us as we speak. And perhaps they are right. <laughs> Damn it! We save Ferelden and they're angry. We save Orlais and they're angry. We close the breach twice and my own hand wants to kill me. Could one thing in this fucking world just stay fixed? Oh. I need to get to the Davarad. You all can fight amongst yourselves once I'm... Once I'm back. Thank you, Inquisitor. Would you... Would you like us to inform the Exalted Council of the danger? We can't finish this fight while worrying about the Exalted Council. For now, we keep this to ourselves. Understood, Inquisitor. I'll have guards ready at the Alluvian, in case the Canari attack the palace. Make a watch over you. Red told us what happened with your hand. Why didn't you say something? I could have... I don't know, something. Whatever happens, I wouldn't trade the years we've had together for anything. I love you. I knew you would break my heart, you bloody bastard. It's been an honor to kick asses beside you all. Anan. Thank you. All of you. So this is the Davarad. Look at this. It's an Alluvian graveyard. Where did the Kunari get all these? How long have they been studying Alluvians? 
The sooner we stop this invasion plan, the better. Are you all right? We should hurry. Here they come! Finally see the truth. Elven magic already tore the sky apart. If the agents of Ben Harrell are not stopped, you will shatter the world as well. The Inquisition has nothing to do with these agents. Come, Inquisitor. I am the eyes and ears of the Canari people. Do you think you can deceive me? You would have died from the mark on your hand, but for the help of one of their chief agents. The same agent who helped seal the breach, who led you to Skyhold, who gave Corypheus the orb, then founded the Inquisition. Solus, agent of Fen Harel. What? He used me. All along, that bastard was manipulating us. Solus tricked us all. He pushed a dying Canari into the Winter Palace to lure you into opposing us. Without him, we could have brought the South peace and wisdom along the gentle path. Now we must take the way of blades. <laughs> Panaheda, Inquisitor. If it is any consolation, Solus will not outlive you. Vidasala's not killing Solus. I'm killing Solus. Come on. Ebesit kata, etwa ost. Maras kata! Your forces have failed. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further. You're an agent for someone who has taken the name Fen Harel. The Kanari reject myth and legend. If you told them of your meeting with Mithal, they would attribute it to a demon. I am no one's agent but my own. I fear that the truth is much simpler and much worse than the Kanari believe. You're Fen Harel. I was Solus first. Fen Harel came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends, and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. 
You lied about everything. I understand your anger. In your position, I would share it. You're really him. I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fenharel, and when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus, I freed the Elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. You said that the Elven gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> A crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. The Evanuris were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings, finally gods, the Evanuris. You banished the false gods. You didn't kill them. You met Methol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You love the Fae. Why would you create the veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the veil, the Evanuris would have destroyed the entire world. How did creating the veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Viadathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade, all destroyed. Your legends are half right. We were immortal. It was not the arrival of humans that caused us to begin aging. It was me. The veil took everything from the elves, even themselves. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. You're going to destroy this world? Not happily. I'll have to stop you. I know you will try. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition, your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years of relative peace. The Canari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheus should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. You gave your orb to Corypheus? Not directly. My agents allowed the Vanatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you had recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the Elves. If you destroyed the Veil, wouldn't the False Gods be freed? 
I had plans. You'd murder countless people, wouldn't you, to save your own? You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. You never cared about us. We were the means to an end. You were people, and you deserved better. Like all the rest I've used in one hopeless battle after another. You control the Alluvians now? Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the Labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her. But he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Alluvians are now mine. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization. And now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body? Who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel? Mine. Why bother disrupting the Canari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kune. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. So you let us do your dirty work? The mistake was yours to fix, Inquisitor. There's still the matter of the Anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. And we are almost out of time. The monk will eventually kill you. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. If I live, I'm coming to stop you. I know. Take my hand. I'm sorry. Live well, while time remains. something must be done, but we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. We apologize for not informing the summit beforehand. We were concerned. Of course you were! The Canari spies were inside your organization! Without our organization, none of us would be here to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. It wasn't a formally authorized treaty that saved Ferelden's people. It wasn't careful diplomacy that ended your inane civil war. It was never about the organization. It was about people doing what was necessary. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a world to save. Again. Effective immediately. The Inquisition is disbanded.
My agents have found nothing. With the Illuvians, he could be anywhere. With the Inquisition officially disbanded, we have no army, no formal alliances. We have what we truly need. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will stop Solus by any means necessary. <laughs>